Another area that comes up uh, that links this nucleophilic substitution reaction with year 13 is the idea of an optical isomer. Now, this mechanism provides evidence for the existence of optical isomerism and shows one of the only ways in which you can convert one enantiomer into another, so one mirror image into the opposite mirror image. And first of all, if you look at SM1, okay, if you start with a pure enantiomer, so one, uh, one version of the optical isomer, you end up with a carbocation intermediate, which means that you end up with 50% or a cement mixture, 50% of each enantiomer, even if you start with an optically pure version. And this is because of this step. Because this is planar, because this is trigonal planar, the OH- can attack equally from both sides, resulting in equal amounts of both the plus and the minus enantiomer. So you end up with a mixture that can half rotate to plane polarized light in one direction, clockwise say, and the other half that can rotate plane polarized light in the other direction, anti-clockwise. Very rarely you can get where the molecule, the shape of the molecule, means that one side is slightly more hindered than the other, and you end up with a very slightly opti optically active mixture, um, where one is slightly easier to attack, or one side is slightly easier for the nucleophile to attack than the other. With SN2, we get what we say is an inversion of uh, optical isomerism. And to understand it, I'm going to bring in a different way of looking at it, which is uh, the 3D version. Now, draw it in 3D because of the way the OH- attacks. Now, if I just bring this one back again, if you look at this here, you can clearly see the OH- or the OH is attacking from the complete opposite side to the CO. Okay, so the OH ends up on the opposite side to the chlorine. And you can see that clearly here, the OH- is attacking behind the chlorine, kicking the chlorine off. And what that means is that where you might have a pure enantiomer, a chiral carbon, something that can rotate plane polarized light in fully in one direction, we end up flipping the molecule. So if this rotated plane polarized light clockwise, the product will rotate at 100% anti-clockwise. And it, it because, just because, if you can see the OH- is attacking here, this causes these to go into the trigonal, into the trigonal planar shape in the middle, okay, as shown here, and then break the other way. So we're just flipping the molecule to form our new product. Okay. So as a quick summary, your SM1 mechanism, no uh, evidence of optical isomerism, or if you start with a pure enantiomer, you end up with a racemic mixture. With SN2, though, you can convert one into another due to the way that the OH- attacks.